Uh, so goals for students. So as you see, we're in number three here on the, uh, in this uh, table of contents. So let's talk about goals for 11th grade. It's a big year, but I got to say, you know, 10th grade was also big for a number of reasons. But 11th grade, as you can imagine, is where people talk about, you know, it's a big year right before you apply to universities. It's rigorous, of course, absolutely. And it's one where you will be tested. And I got to say the only other semester I got to say that's harder than this is semester fall of 12th grade with all that's going on, keeping up your grades, doing all your applications. And that first semester for 12th grade does matter a lot because if you are getting any grades and those grades get sent over during the cycle, um, those would matter a lot too. Okay, this is, uh, I, I, again, I, I really like these slides. Uh, great, piece, great pieces of advice that I can attest to and I can really support and say, uh, yeah, when you're, when you're in 11th grade, you're an upper level student which means you're stepping up, most likely being considered, excuse me, being considered for leadership positions and really taking uh, activities to another level. That, that, that visibility is there. Uh, that impact of, or that dedication from previous years now leading up to grade 11, you know, and then grade 12, you're, you're, you're moving up in the, in the ranks, so to speak. And it's really important to, to recognize that, that you are in more, your, more students are looking up to you by this point uh, in your time when you're in 11th grade. I know it sounds scary, <laughs> but, but uh, you're, you're, you're made of the good stuff. So, so keep it going. Uh, so take standardized tests. Again, that's part of, your, part of the challenge of, of grade 11 is figuring out how to schedule all this stuff. We work on the scheduling and what makes sense depending on the individual student. Certainly, colleges are going to be on your mind, universities. I know for a number of schools, they don't begin their college counseling process until probably January or February of, of grade 11, when you start going, meeting their counselors, going through that. Uh, certainly, you can begin looking at schools. If you haven't done so already, it's okay. You have time. But certainly, the folks at Ingenious, myself, we help with that process. We give advice on how to do school research and how to keep that information organized and well uh, annotated. And of course, touring colleges, uh, you know, uh, right now you're probably doing virtual tours. That's okay. Uh, you know, one thing that, that you can do is um, reach out to an admissions office and ask if there are any student ambassadors uh, in case you want real, uh, an on the ground student perspective. Okay, let's move on. Uh, these are some of the, uh, some more of the housekeeping tips, uh, creating your common application account, brainstorming on your personal statement. Uh, and of course, that relationship with teachers, staff, uh, and staff are very, very important. So if you are a rising 11th grader, um, great time to get this piece of advice. Make sure that you are engaged with the faculty. Make sure that when you start meeting with your college counselor or even your advisor who's been there, uh, make sure that those folks continue to know you well, continue to really feel very positive about you, uh, because that really can help in a letter of recommendation with the amount of detail, nuance, and praise uh, that matters a great deal. So keep in touch with them. Stay in touch. I know it's hard during the pandemic to, to stay visible, but um, even just asking a que yeah, que questions during class or even going to office hours uh, can be really helpful. <laughs> I love this. This is great. Um, I really appreciate this quote. Um, and Joel Butterly is, is a wonderful uh, leader and is, you know, really good vision has really helped us a lot in supporting us, uh, what we do. Uh, but yeah, the truth is you start this process, even if you're not working with an advisor such as myself or my colleagues, um, you are still starting this process ahead of time. Uh, my, my, my view is you keep one eye ahead, but live in the moment in high school, live in enjoy these experiences. These experiences through high school are, are, are really formative years um, and really can shape you. And uh, so really, you're not necessarily waking up in 11th or 12th grade saying, I got to do something now to improve my applications. Hopefully you're thinking about it ahead of time. And it's a simple enough concept to, 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 to know what to do, but the other thing is executing. And that's something I want to emphasize and can maybe talk about a little bit later. Okay, so I guess let's switch gears for a moment and, and try a different approach here to this presentation. 
How do you reverse engineer an admission success? So backwards mapping. All right, let's do it. Ah, these Venn diagrams are awesome. Don't you think you thought you escaped them when you were, you know, past mathematics? Nope. These are very important visuals. Um, uh, you know, it's hard sometimes to explain in words or without being too verbose about this process. Uh, but hopefully this gives you a nice visualization of what what goes into this, um, these sort of these qualities, these things you focus on that that come out of the what's already evident in, in your record. These are things that you want to tease out. Think, these are messages that you want to convey with confidence. 